Good morning. Some of you might have seen me before, some of you may not have. I've had the pleasure of meeting so many faces around here since I've started, but if you don't, my name is Paige, Paige Goby, and I'm a wife to Caleb who's sitting in the front row. I have a three-year-old daughter running around like crazy out the back. I am a high school teacher, so I'm used to speaking in front of people, but usually they're a bit more menacing than you guys and um, talking a bit more, so it's nice to have a more captivated audience who are quiet. And I'm a Christian of seven years, so today I'm going to be sharing something that's really deep in my heart, and that is just where my faith is at and hopefully getting you guys to lean into where your faith is as well because we're all on very different journeys and I'm just so very blessed and honoured to be able to stand up to you today and um, share what's been going on for me and hopefully what's going to be going on in your life. So today I actually want to start off with an exploration of Ezekiel. When I was thinking about what I could possibly say, I had such a big picture in my mind about steps in faith. I had a big picture about measuring faith because, you know, teachers like to measure data and growth. And so for me today, I want to share to you from Ezekiel on a little message I call Immersed in Faith. Uh, the prophet Ezekiel, this book is really, really visionary. We have so many visions coming before him. We have a lot of trials and tribulations. It was a really difficult time uh, within within his life and within the Israelites' life, and so I thought we could lean into there today. To truly grasp the significance of his visions, I'd like to first provide context because I love providing context to help with your understanding. Um, the nation in Israel, it had been divided, and Jerusalem, the holy city, had been taken over by the Babylonians. Many of God's people were taken they were put into exile. They were separated from the lands that they had loved, that they'd lived in their whole life. And they were, and the temple that was the signal of their presence was taken from them and destroyed. And so it was a time of great separation. It was a time of great um, sorrow for them. And so today I want us to understand that in this backdrop of despair, in this desolation of their lives, um, Ezekiel receives quite a few visions that empower him and give hope. We know that he's seen visions upon calling judgment upon the Israelites for their disobedience, for their idolatry. People are not feeling that great at this time. And like us all in this world, there are times where we don't feel that great. And sometimes we want to gloss over them. Sometimes we want to ignore the fact they're there. But the truth is we'll all go through struggles and tribulation. It's something that none of us can avoid. And we always look to God and we understand that God is a blessing. But it's something that Christians are not excused from. We suffer just as much as everyone else. And so I want us to have a look at Ezekiel 37 where we read the vision of the Valley of Dry Bones, where God's presence comes to breathe life into his people and restore them to their land. It's a promise and it's that vision of hope because despite being in low places, our God is always there to give us hope. And so I'm going to do Ezekiel 37, 1 to 4. The hand of the Lord was on me. He brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them and I saw a great many Bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? He said in response, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I think that's such, such a powerful image there. The dry bones, it's just missing life. It's that time when each and every one of us are walking through life going, there's just no passion, I'm feeling empty, I'm feeling sad. It's dry bones, it's a dry valley for a lot of us. And so we see this vision from God with these instructions that help us to understand what we can do in these situations. He, the dry bones are really an example of feeling hopeless and it feels a bit lifeless. And so God asks Ezekiel, as I said, whether the bones can live again. Are they stuck are they stuck in this? Do they have to be dry forever or can they live again? To which Ezekiel responds that God only knows. 
And the truth is God does know that the bones can live again. He knows that our lives can be anew. He knows that they can be fresh. And so I want to look at what he actually did and what he asked them to prophesy over them this morning. He said, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So he instructed the bones, just like us. Imagine yourself, I guess, as bones in this situation. To hear the word of the Lord. There was a rattling noise. Noises, all the bones were coming together again. And so they were forming complete skeletons. They were scattered, they weren't united, and now they were complete. They were partially whole. Then the sinews, the flesh, the skin started to cover the bones. However, they still remained lifeless. So we have this body, we have this experience, just like a lot of us, we're doing things, we're going through life, but their spirit was still lifeless. There wasn't that passion going on. And so God instructs Ezekiel to prophesy and to breathe life into those bones, to breathe lives into those bodies, commanding it to come from all edges of the earth and to come anew and fresh into the body so that those who were slain, those bones that were dry and lifeless could once again live. Such an amazing photo. Ezekiel obeys this and breath enters the body and standing up, we see this vastness. These valley of dry bones have now come to life and these people who were once dead can live again. Much like those bones, God has his journey within us. Sometimes, like I've said before, we do feel a bit lifeless and we're going through the motions. But just like Ezekiel, we have the power to step in and we have the power to prophesy life into our situations. All we have to do is call upon the Lord to do that. Even when we're in the midst of the struggles, even when we're in the best times and we're living on the high of achievement and success or we're so happy, calling God's breath of life into our situations makes us new. And that is such an exciting revelation for each of us to have. Awesome. In this context of judgment and restoration that we have here, I'd like to move on to Ezekiel 47 then. It's where Ezekiel sees the vision of the temple and the river flowing from it. The temple representing God's presence among his people had previously been destroyed. We know it's been destroyed. And yet we have this prophetic vision of it being repaired, restored, and all of its glory being bigger and more personal than ever. And so, just because I love symbolism, the temple represents his presence the water flowing from it and the river around it represents God's presence among his people. And I think it's really awesome that Ethan just before said there was a cloud over us. Whenever I think of clouds, I think of rain. And I think quite often we think of getting wet as a negative thing. Oh, my clothes are going to get all soggy. Oh, it's going to be uncomfortable. But in this context, I want us to understand that the water is the presence of God. So, the rain coming over us, stepping into the water, that is how he gets to us. That is us stepping in of our own volition or being saturated in everything that he has for us. And so it's a really powerful uh, symbol that I want us all to keep within us. So I'm going to focus on Ezekiel 47, 3 to 6. It's not exactly the most interesting to the eye scripture, but it is meaningful nonetheless. It reads, as the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits, then led me through the water that was ankle deep. He then measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. He then measured off another, what do you know? But now it was a river that he could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in a river nobody could cross. So he asked me, son of man, do you see this? And so I'm asking us to see this picture today. The English teacher in me really wants to point out to you that this last question is rhetorical. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not a question of do you see it? He has to see it. He's looking out from this glorious temple in this vision and he's seeing the abundance. He's seeing this river flowing. He's seeing this life brought to a valley that was previously dead. And so there's no way he can miss this. And that is why it's rhetorical. As we know, the flowing water represents the abundance, the love, his presence, his understanding, his comfort. And so we have this river flowing beautifully. 
And it's that symbol of hope and restoration in the Israelites' life. That's our symbol of hope and restoration in our lives too. The waters of God's presence has so much to offer us. And even though this this scripture that I showed just before may not have made a lot of sense, I'm actually going to reframe it in your mind a little bit as a step-by-step and look into what the big deal about this is. What they see surrounding it is in Ezekiel 12. He sees abundance. He sees fruit trees of all kinds growing on the banks. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fall. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. So I guess you might be wondering, why am I telling you about this? The awesome news is, this is a great picture of God's blessings and his plan for us, each and every one of us, to be amongst the people and to offer us a chance to come in closer to him. The flowing water obviously represents him, and so it's a powerful thing for us to take into our life each and every day. So I have a picture that I edited on Canva. Yep, it's very primary school teacherish, um, but I really wanted a uh, like an image for you to picture. I want you to imagine that you're over here and this lady to this end of the photo's position. Picture yourself standing just towards the water's edge, feeling the gentle waves brushing against your ankles, your ankle deep in this water, just like Ezekiel was. This shallow end of the water is representing your curiosity of your faith. This shallow end is you stepping in and asking questions and coming before God for guidance. It's you discovering what you stand for, what you believe. It's you really setting a foundation in God. It's that really curious time that we all have, just like my toddler out the back, who's curious about everything, including power sockets lately. So that's really great. Um, This is a stage where we're kind of testing out where God fits in our life. It's bringing him into some, it's not bringing him into other parts of our life, but it's those initial steps of obedience that we have in accepting him and bringing him into everything we do. And so some of us will be there, some of us will be in that ankle deep stage of faith. And my question to you is, how are you testing your actual faith today? Are you singing songs to him? Are you spending time in prayer? Are you delving into scriptures? Are you asking people really tough questions? Like Pastor Rob likes to answer on his Tuesday night podcast. Are you asking those questions to help firm your faith? Are you building that strong foundation? And are you actually willing to take the step into the water full stop? Because you might see the person standing by the edge, but taking any step into that water is a big step. And it is a step that should be respected and honoured. Are you willing to take that step into the trust of God? Even when things look barren, things look dry, things look like they're not really going to fix themselves out. Are you actually willing to take that step in? Next, we progress to our gentleman here who is now knee deep, looking really happy. The water rises up to your knees. Imagine yourself once again in this position. This signifies a deepening of your understanding of who God is. It represents that deepening of your commitment to him, how you're interacting with him daily. It's taking that next step in and going, you know what, yeah, this is for me. I'm going to be more amongst him. I'm going to go to that Uh, Bible study or that connect group and I'm going to learn more and I'm going to try and I'm going to build my life more about him. It's taking that step in. This stage calls us to deepen our understanding of who he is, not who we're told he is for ourselves, and to actually embrace what he has for us in his word and presence because each of us he has something different for. It's not the same. We're such a diverse congregation and he loves that about us. And because of that, each of our diverse journeys that we're on are also going to have something different for him. It is not all the same. So my question to you, if you're currently in this knee-deep water, how deeply are you actually willing to surrender to God? You're kind of, you're a quarter of the way in or a third of the way in. How deep are you willing to go? Is this where you're going to stop? Or are you willing to take that next step in? Are you actually open to his blessings? Are you identifying them in your life? Sometimes it's really hard to see the positive when we're surrounded by negatives. 
But are you willing to turn around and go, no, this is, I have a good God. I know that he's going to do wonderful things for me. I know I can lean in and have faith, even when he's presenting those to you in really unexpected ways. Then we continue on and we have our lady over here who is waist high in the water, just like Ezekiel was, marched forward, experienced life waist high. Waist high is where we're, we're kind of, we're almost there. We're almost fully into his presence. Our head and our top half is kind of what's holding us back here. It's when we're kind of got two feet in the world and we're going, oh yeah, all of this is for me, all of it is, but I'm still hesitating to give a few things up to God. Many people are in this place. So many people are in this place. For many, many times and seasons, I was in this place. It's where our faith starts to become a way of life and we start to actually sacrifice up little parts of ourselves to God and going, God, I want you here. I want you amongst us. I want you to take control of this aspect of our life and I want you to understand that I will do anything you instruct me to. It's where we're giving up little bits and little bits. So my question to you is, if you're almost fully immersed and you're in this waste stage is, are you fully, are you trying to fully immerse yourself? Is that what you want? Because God has more for you if that is what you want. You don't have to stay in this place where you're half in, half out. You can step further into God. You can have more and he wants to provide you with that, no matter what it is. Comfort and suffering, a friend to talk to, a father to be proud of you and to bless you. This is the time where you can really step in and understand. And so lastly, I put this, this guy celebrating under the water because he's fully in, he's just dove in and he's experiencing it all from top to, from top to toe, he's under the water. This is when it comes so deep that it's impossible to cross. That's when Jesus is so embedded in us that there's no going back from that. It symbolizes our vastness and abundance that we're experiencing here. It doesn't mean we're not experiencing the bad, but we're experiencing Jesus at the same time who transforms. Life is full because you've surrendered it to him. You've understood that, yeah, things happen, but my life is dedicated to him and I know his plans for me are bigger than what I'm seeing currently. It's understanding that in experiencing that fullness, devoting yourself to Jesus, becoming more like Jesus, you're now actually blessing others. You're reaching into his kingdom and you're going, yeah, this is for me, but this is also for everybody else. And I can't sit there and only take it selflessly anymore. I need to share it with others. I need them to see his light and I need to become more like Jesus. And so we have this here. And my question to you is, are you actually ready to experience that? He calls all of us to be here. He wants all of us to be somewhere in his river. But are you ready to experience everything that he has for you? Are you willing to go, you know what? Those areas I was kind of, I didn't really want to give them up. I was enjoying them a bit much and being in control, like me, a bit of a control freak at times. Um, it's giving that up and going, no, you're bigger than I am. I'm going to experience the fullness you have and I'm going to experience that plan you have for me. These are the stages that we kind of have throughout our faith. Big stages. Every step is massive and more, not more important than the other. They are all equally important in our faith journey. Just as Ezekiel witnessed in the scripture I read to you, where he was stepping in further or further, he was stepping into God's presence and abundance. And we can do that too. It's not something that is stuck in the scripture. It's something we can live out every single day. And I think that sometimes it's really easy to put that aside and think, yeah, yeah, I'll be in his presence. But it's another thing to harness that, to reflect on that and to wake up every day going, no, this day is for you. It is yours. I know that for me personally, seven years ago, when I first came to God, as you know, seven years Christian, I had just come out of a really toxic relationship. I was feeling emotionally and spiritually really stunted. I didn't feel like I was growing anymore. And so I started questioning my purpose. I started questioning who I was, what I was made to do, and what was really going on in the world. I was 19 and... 
at that stage, I contacted Caleb, my really good friend Caleb, and said, hey, you're a Christian. Can you take me to church with you, please? Because I think church is where I'm going to find that. And he did. He obliged very kindly and took me to a local church where, unbeknownst to me, eyes closed, experiencing God, I answered to an altar call, having no idea what it was. They said, you know, put your hand up if you want to experience God. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. And I had no idea what it involved. I walked up the front, I prayed the prayer, and I went from standing far, far back from even being anywhere near the water to going fully in, in a very short time. I'd experienced God in this service and I went, well, that's for me. This is what I want my life to look at. This is such joy, more joy than I had felt in a really long time. And so I took that leap and bound all the way in. I spent a year and a half where I was just constantly in his presence. I was going to every single uh, church worship night I could. I was, you know, mediating that relationship between should I raise my hand, should I not, what do I do, let's go to a connect group, let's go to all of these church conferences, let's do all of this. I was just looking for every single experience with God I could get because that was what was fulfilling me and that is what can fulfill all of us on a daily basis. And so it might look really cool that I went from all the way over here to fully immersed but throughout my Christian experience I've been all over the place with the level that I've been experiencing. I've been fully in. I've taken a step back and I've stood at the water's edge. I've been ankle deep. I've been all over the place because it's a journey with God. We don't stay in one place and the seasons change. Yeah, it's, it's something that I felt was really important when we're looking at this. And so for you, what I want you to understand is that since coming to this church especially, there was a lot of hurt from previous places. And we started coming here and we just knew immediately when we walked in here that this was our place. This was the place for us. And I felt empowered from church. I was kind of knee deep in my faith and God just really ignited that in me to jump right back in. I started spending more time in his presence. I started putting worship music on again every morning in the car and declaring his name before I went off to work. And I reached a point where I was like, wait, I'm declaring God's name and how good he is on the weekend. But during the week, I'm not showing that through my job. I worked in the public school and I loved my job there. I love being a teacher, but I wasn't showing who he was because I wasn't able to on a daily basis. I was overwhelmed with behavioral struggles and admin and all of those things that we have to do, but I wasn't living my life in his presence. And so one day I was scrolling through Facebook as I do and a job at a Christian school appeared before me. And I'm like, oh, probably not qualified to go teach here, but I'm just gonna give it a shot. And I shot my shot and I got the job. And this year, I've been teaching devotions almost every morning. I get to teach about Jesus in every single class I'm in. In my English classes, when I'm teaching about grammar. In my history classes, when I'm teaching about world history, war. We're looking at biblical perspectives on those things. In my politics and business classes, where really it doesn't feel like there's a lot of room for Jesus in that. But that is where we need Jesus. And so... <laughs> bringing that in and getting my students to question it while I'm questioning alongside them. And so Jesus has really brought me into this season of focusing purely on him. I went from doing it on the weekends and when I can to going, no, I'm experiencing such fulfillment. And so even though I didn't think it could get any more, my husband and I reached out to Jimmy and said, hey, Jimmy, I heard you need some help with the youth team. We have some experience with youth. We spend quite a bit of time with them. Do you mind if we come and help? And Jimmy's like, yep, come right in. No worries, please, please, please. And we loved every second of it. God drew us in to plant us here. And I went from a stage of being, being a Christian, loving God, but not being in his presence every day, to now turning around and thanking God every day for being fully immersed in his presence. And that is a massive jump. I think all of us will find times where we're standing on the water's edge, where we're looking out and we're going, I love God. It's just really difficult in this stage I'm in. I don't know how it plays out for me in my job and in my life. And sometimes we question where we are and that is completely normal. But what I want to reaffirm in us is that God is many things. 
he's God, he's our father, he's our friend, he's our counsellor, our leader. And so he is proud of us in every single stage that you see. He is proud when we're at the water's edge and we're considering, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to take that step in because you're using your mind and you're prioritising him. You're thinking of him and it's that seed that can grow. He calls us to trust in him and take that first step of faith where we're kind of ankle deep, where we're testing the waters, where we're understanding what we believe. And it's a really magical time going through all of these stages with him. It's not stagnant. It moves around. We have faith that God will guide us in all of these seasons of our life. We're not going to stand still. He's going to come to us in exactly the situation we are. And regardless of who we think we are, regardless of the faults that we think we have, the challenges we see before us, the past that we've had, he loves us all so intently that even standing at the edge of the water He thinks that is the biggest celebration. By accepting Jesus' gift when he died for us, he came and died so that we could have that presence. He died so that we could step into that water and be with him. It was hard before that. We had to go through someone else. Now we get to step into him in every single aspect of our life, not just church, not just when we're listening to music. We get to glorify him with everything we do every single day. And that is just magical. By expecting him to come and by accepting his gift, we can feel empowered, not only in ourselves, to express our faith in however way we're being called to do, but to also encourage others to take steps in their faith and to grow deeper. Because it's one thing accepting Jesus into ourselves, but it's a totally other thing encouraging others to see Jesus as well, becoming more like him, showing them the light in their situations and speaking life where those dry bones are. And so I want to read you a short scripture from Hebrews, which I think really encapsulates this. It's Hebrews 10, 19 to 22. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have a confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is, his body, since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to him, with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed pure with the water. I want to encourage you that that river of his presence is the water that washes us pure every time we step in. Every time we dip a toe in, that is when we're washed pure. Every time we think of Jesus and call him into our situation, That is when we're washed clean. That is when he reminds us that no matter what we've done wrong, we are loved, we are worthy, and that we can call upon him and rely on him in every stage of our life. And so what I want to encourage each and every one of us is that once again, he is proud of where we are. He's proud of you for coming here today. He is proud of you for standing at the water's edge, for being fully immersed, because We're prioritising him, we're thinking of him and we're starting those steps to deepening our faith. And I think it's something I I really took for granted when I was a teenager. I went to youth group a few times, um, a few times and I kind of experienced God and then I stepped out and I kind of thought that it was all in or nothing. And that's not true. God wants us as far in as we can go because he opens ways for us to experience him more. He's constantly trying to open doors for us so that we may experience and live in his abundance. I want to just deepen our understanding that the blessing that he has for us is greater than the circumstance we're in. And we don't think that we're worthy of stepping into the waters, but he thinks we are. And so I'd like to leave us all with a few questions too. Where are you currently in your faith? Are you at the water's edge? Are you ankle deep? Are you knee deep, waist deep, fully in? Where are you? That stage is so important and I'm proud of you for being where you are and God is proud of you. And what is the next step in your journey? Where are you going to welcome God into next? Your job, your family, your mental health, what's going on and where can you invite him to take that next step, no matter how small, no matter how big?
And so I'd just like to pray over all of us today. So if I could get everyone to stand and just bow their heads. Lord, I just want to thank you for each and every person in this room, that you've called them to be here and that you call them into their presence. I pray that each of them know just how proud of you, of them you are. I pray that each and every one of us would step further into your presence and be courageous and audacious enough to, to step in further with our faith, no matter where that lo- what lo- that looks like or where it goes, because you are a good God who loves us, who opens doors and paves the way for the great and blessings to be upon us and others. I want to thank you for each and every journey within this room, for bringing them through whatever it is, and that they would understand and know that you are sovereign, you are God, you are good, and that you have it under your control. I say all of these things in your mighty name. Amen. Beautiful. Jimmy.